In your journey to destiny, one of the things you need to guard very carefully and master are your relationships, whether they be family relationships, your girlfriend relationships, your workplace relationships, and more so your romantic relationships, so that in your quest for love and for a spouse to settle down with, you will need to be very alert in looking out for certain red flags in, in prospective suitors. Uh, over the years in my legal profession and even in my church work, and as I've um, been dealing with uh, topics in season women, I've come across many women who would point out certain types of characters. And one of the characters they point out is um, a golden heir. A golden heir, typically the signs or the, the, how you recognize a golden heir, is that he's usually uh, a, ch a son of a single mother. She's given up everything, made all the sacrifices, and literally spent every shilling on him to bring him to where he is. And he's become educated and polished and he's had everything he's needed in life uh, in terms of material things because she's, she's made sure he did not lack just because there wasn't a father in his life. And what happens is there a very close bond develops between that kind of a young man and his mother, uh, understandably so. So you come along and you are the prospective girlfriend and you meet this guy and maybe you, you've been, you have a child or two children or you've even been married and you've divorced. So chances are often that you're slightly older than this guy. So you could be maybe like three, four, five years older than him. And, but somehow you get on and you click and a relationship starts. Now you will notice, one of the things you will notice is that the, the, the connection or the bond between him and his mother is rather strong. And, and again, understandably so. I mean, he's grateful his mother brought him to where he is. She, he understands, she's sacrificed. And, and you can understand the mother, this is her pride and joy. And she wants the best for him, even in terms of marriage and children. So what happens is here you come, you get on with this young man, he genuinely cares for you and, and may even be in love with you and wants to settle down with you. And he loves your children, he has no problem with that, whether it's one child or more. He has no problem with your, with your ex, you know, your baby daddy, if there's a, an ex-husband or a, or a baby daddy in the picture. He has no problem. He seems to be able to master all that very well. And his focus is you. But his mother is in the picture. And what happens is why that relationship will have some challenges, not that it cannot work completely, but it will have challenges. And there'll be red flags that you need to look out for and work on them before you get too deep in that relationship. His mother wants his attention. She wants his time. She wants to be able to make decisions with him and for him. Some mothers, they may do so within reasonable bounds, but others, it's way outside what is reasonable. And you may begin to feel like his, his mother's role in his life is a bit too much, and, uh, and she needs to step back and let him be. Um, but what happens, but it's very difficult for him because you're making him choose between two loyalties, his loyalty to you and his loyalty to her. And probably where the real conflict comes and what uh, drives his mother up the wall is when you decide you don't want any more children. Maybe you have one, two or three and he doesn't have any children, remember? And you suggest that perhaps you have it, these children are enough. And he goes along with it on the grounds that he already loves your kids and you know, it's okay, you can go on like that. And his mother hears this and she's like, first of all, it means she'll never be named if she comes from the tradition and culture where uh, grandchildren are named after the grandparents. And more so, she would not have grandchildren. I mean, this is her only child. It's a, it's a sole child of a single mother. So she doesn't have any other children. This is the only one. And she was looking forward to grandchildren. Not that grandchildren are automatic, remember, because they come from God. So he could even marry somebody else without children and not get children. But it's a natural reaction from a mother. You know, it's a natural reaction from a mother. So that is a red flag right there. The other thing is that there is the father of your children 
we're assuming you're not wid- you're not a widow, you're a divorcee, or there is a baby daddy, even if they hadn't been a marriage, which means that if he's a father who is also involved in your children's lives, he's in the background. And there'll be days he'll come and pick up the kids from the house to spend time with them. And you'll find this golden air there. Conflict may or may not arise, but those are red flags. And also the issue of whether, uh, whether you want, this, this golden air has money. He's been educated, he has a good job. So he's also a provider. He's also taking care of you and the kids. And this is another thing that puts his mother off. Like here she is, she's the one who sacrificed. And he may also be taking care of his mother, but just the idea that he's now taking care of a woman, uh, uh, taking care of your children, another man's children, that may put her off. It may bring conflicts. And constantly she will speak to her son. She will drop seeds of discord and discontent. She will mention things like that. How can you agree not to have children? How can you look after another man's children? How can you provide for another man's children? Because remember the baby daddy or the ex-husband may become less providing now if he was providing at all because now there's another man buying the kids toys, taking them swimming, paying for things inevitably in the house. So these are things that inevitably you cannot ignore. They are part of society. It's something that you cannot wish away. You cannot force the mother to see things your way because she, understandably she has her view on the situation. And that's where you need to step back and look at the situation and say, if this is a very serious relationship, if indeed it's going somewhere, it's going to end up in, uh, in, in marriage, a long-lasting marriage built to last, then you need to address those issues. Because what might happen, he may even overcome his mother's uh, disagreements and actually end up marrying you. But a time may come, because relationships have ups and downs, when he begins to resent you. He actually begins to feel cheated, shortchanged, that he didn't have children. He wanted children, he didn't have children. He begins to feel that you're older than him, he wishes he had married a younger girl, maybe now you're not as fun anymore, you're not being able to do the things you need to do together. All sorts of reasoning, but they're coming from a place where you didn't address the issues that needed to be addressed and settled at the very onset, you know? He may even start feeling like you biased, you influenced him away from his mother, now he doesn't have such a good relationship with her, etc. So a golden heir type of relationship has a lot of red flags that you need to watch out for and deal with on the onset. There is always scarcely. There is always um, um, uh, getting assistance from those who've been there before and done that. And you're able to work out those issues and decide is it possible for us to have a, a viable, healthy relationship and overcome these issues? That is a golden heir, the mummy's boy. He may or he may not work, so you need to be careful.